Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Mike Crowley, the 2020 president of SFPE, and we're going to run through our annual report. Uh, I've got quite a few slides, so we'll be moving along quickly. Uh, you can send your questions in in the chat function, and if we have time at the end, we'll, uh, we'll respond to them then. Um, if not, we will definitely get back to you uh, on those. So, uh, we'll start out real quick with the really boring stuff, our financial statements. Um, then we're going to compare the last couple of years. Um, you can see this is our balance sheet on our assets. We have actually have increased our assets over the last, uh, over 2018 to about 3.26 uh, million in assets. And same thing with the balance sheet. Um, again, uh, we are fairly strong on our uh, liabilities and assets, so they do balance out. Now, a little bit more interesting is where our operating revenues are coming from. Uh, you can see 2018, 2019, there is a dip in it, but uh, that's accounted for by the fact that we had three conferences in 2018. Uh, 2019 is a more typical year where we had only uh, two of our conferences. Uh, so total revenue last year of about 2.5 uh, million. And if I can get it to change, there we go, to our uh, expenses. Our expenses came in around uh, uh, 2.6, I'm sorry, yeah, 2.6. So um, slight operating loss on that part of it. Um, our reserves, and this is probably part of the good story, um, we have a deep reserve. Our deep reserves uh, hit a peak uh, before the uh, COVID crisis of 2.7. Uh, the most recent one, we're around 2.5 million in our deep reserves. So uh, it's still holding fairly steady. Um, and some of that has come back in the last few weeks. Um, here's the total income and expenses uh, for the different years. Although on our operating, we were down a little bit. You can see on our total income and expenses, we did make uh, a slight profit for uh, 2019. Um, again, we're in really good shape from uh, the standpoint of the financials for SFPE. Um, some of the uh, quick summary, um, again, best year uh, financially uh, that we had, uh, a combination of our deep reserve growth in our activities uh, for revenue generation. We topped 3 million in total revenue. We had two successful conferences in Ma Malaga, Spain and Chandler, Arizona. Uh, we got our human behavior guide and compensation reports out. Um, we also are, uh, transitioned the computerized testing model for NCWS, uh, the FBE exam. So this October will be our first um, electronic exam on the computer. Um, we had some new investments in the SFPE Foundation, and the foundation has been kind of reinvigorated in the last 18 months. And uh, last but not least is our decision to create a new uh, European legal entity uh, to assist our uh, European members in being active in the local area. So um, 2020. Um, again, a little bit different. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the activities we're going through in 2020. Uh, unfortunately, there, there may be, uh, there's less face-to-face -face contact. Um, our board, uh, 2019 to 2020, we uh, had two new members come on, uh, Shameen Rashid uh, Sumar and uh, Sean Kelly. Uh, J.C. Harrington uh, rotated off as a past president and Professor Chow uh, rotated off the board. So again, fairly stable board um, and we're working uh, forward. Uh, the big push this year is going to be working on uh, updating or a new strategic plan for SFP. Uh, early on, we decided that the mission and vision statements are going to stay the same. So we're not going to make any changes to these, um, but we are uh, going to be looking at our update of our strategic plan. So here's the strategic plan from 2018 to 2020. Uh, advocate for the profession, serve the educational needs across the lifespan of the PE or FSE, fire safety engineer. Uh, be the trusted source for the profession and establish the society as a global organization, including chapter members, communities um, that meet the professional needs 
uh, and the mission for our uh, strategic goals. So that's our 2020 plan. And uh, actually, we're going through the process right now of updating it. And as we go through, uh, a lot of the discussions we're having right now in the current or the updated uh, strategic plan are very similar to what we looked at in uh, in the uh, 2018 to 2020 plan. Um, and, but again, many things are staying the same. Uh, we're looking at some of the improvements, some of the emphasis may, is gonna change. Uh, we're currently in the process. Uh, we had originally planned to have a two-day meeting, but unfortunately we've had to stretch that out over a number of, uh, of team calls and, and conference calls and things like that to get it done. So we're working on that and we should have something out hopefully in the next month and a half or so. So uh, let's look at what's going on right now. Oops, clicked right through our members and chapter relations. Um, Bill Koffel is our CMC chair. Uh, Julie is the uh, staff liaison. Uh, Austin Guerreras Garazzi is our marketing manager and Maxine Cates is the administrative assistant for this. And it's nice to note that our membership history, um, we are up. Um, right now, 2020, uh, this is the largest we've had. We're at 4327. Uh, we have about uh, 432 non-paying members, most of which are our student chapter members. So, um, again, re recruitment and attrition. Uh, you know, again, this is kind of those challenges that we have for every organization, but you can see as we're, we have been trending the last few years. We have been retaining uh, more than we've been losing. Um, and actually, uh, 2019 was a spike. Uh, you can see there uh, a fairly good retention. So we have some terrific recruiting going on. Um, we also have some chapter growth we're going to show you in a, in a couple of slides also. Uh, the breakdown of our membership, uh, we have... 27, 16 members. We have 1,400 uh, professional members, 189 uh, fellows, 427 students, and five honorary. The honorary membership is uh, no longer exists, uh, so there's a few people that are aging out of that. Um, one of our high notes that I think that we have is our 22 student chapters with 427 student members. Um, if you monitor anything on Twitter, uh, a couple of our chapters are extremely active in posting um, all the activities that we're doing. Keep an eye out for our, our London chapter. The student chapter is very active. Uh, a lot of things going and open to a lot of different people. Uh, the 10 top countries for our membership, uh, United States, Canada, one, two, followed by the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and you can see uh, the remainder is right there. So again, um, we are still growing in membership and a lot of our growth is occurring internationally. Um, 10 top states, California, Maryland, Massachusetts, and Texas. Um, you can see again, where we make up the uh, United States is about 3,300 total. So we're about uh, almost 75% of the total uh, membership in the United States. Um, number of women's in F FPE. Now this is a great uh, this is a great indication. Hopefully we can get it to carry through. Uh, our current member base, we have about 10% of our members are women. Um, student chapter is about 23%. So hopefully we can bring those all the way through into the profession to help increase our diversity. Um, generational breakdown. Um, you can see we have it's broken down by decade. Um, this is nothing of a surprise. Uh, a, a majority of our membership is right here in the, born in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s uh, for that standpoint. Um, chapter growth. Again, th this is the highlight I wanted to point out. Our chapter growth has been really great over the last three years. We've gone uh, from 97 to 108 chapters. Um, we have 12 new chapters from 2008 to 2014 and 25 new chapters from 2015 to present. So our chapter growth has been uh, very robust. Um, again, with the new chapter uh, structure that we have, we think it's helping us um, 
with the chapter growth. Um, six new chapters that formed here just in 2020, uh, Cyprus, Egypt, Germany, Greece, uh, Hong Kong, uh, Polytechnic student chapter, and uh, Pakistan chapter. So again, this is some exciting growth that we've had, um, and it's been very, very um, exciting to see that go on constantly. It seems like we keep having them pop up every three or four weeks. So. Um, SFP Europe, we, uh, we, in our last strategic plan, we did make a commitment to uh, focus on Europe and international expansion. Um, we did hire a, a part-time European director, Jose Luis Fernandez. Um, we had to let him go in, 20, uh, in April of 2020. Uh, the main focus there was on European events, alliances, uh, growth, building the networks, um, and with all of the lockdowns and everything else, uh, Jose Luis could not do any of that. So uh, that's one of the reasons we had to let him go. Um, again, you, we've seen a lot of new chapter growth there in Europe. Uh, we're developing some technical committees to address a lot of the issues that are unique to uh, Europe. And then we're also forming a le legal entity based out of Brussels. It's going to be called SFP Europe. Uh, we should have everything finalized late 2020 or early 2021. 20, uh, um, and this will uh, basically be used for recognition and um, activities relative to the EU um, as, a, as an organization. Our Corporate 100 program is still going strong. Uh, we have 56 partners, six visionaries, nine beneficiaries, uh, benefactors, 11 patrons, and uh, 31 sustainers. Again, uh, these are our corporate partners that are supporting SFPE uh, monetarily uh, with their membership, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, you can see the actual names of all of our uh, members on the website uh, for that. As uh, part of our uh, strategic planning. We uh, engaged uh, McKinley advisors to help us with a member's needs uh, survey. Uh, this survey went out uh, in, I guess you'd call it mid-February, the 11th to the 24th of February. Uh, we had a total of 598 respondents, uh, 455 complete, 143 partial respondents, uh, to give us about a 13.3% response rate. Um, that's a fairly decent response rate uh, for uh, surveys of professional associations. Usually trade groups are between three and 8% and a professional association six to 13. So we were on the high end of that, uh, which is good. Um, but it also helped us uh, define our profile of who our members are, what they're doing, and then we're gonna talk about some of the findings from there. Um, there were no surprises here. We had a pretty good idea of the breakdown of our membership um, and how long they've been in a profession, where the regions are that they work and things like that. So again, we've had this information, just uh, reflects it. Now, some of the key findings that we had, uh, and again, none of these are earth shattering, um, but, a lot of it is reassuring that we're heading in the right direction. Uh, respondents reported that most of the priorities SAP are to attract and guide the next generation of fire protection engineers, fire safety engineers, and to focus on improving, expanding SFPE's educational offerings. Um, another key finding was uh, lack of awareness uh, or lack of perception of the profession. And then also an inadequate number of qualified FPEs uh, to fit the workforce. And again, this uh, our survey did cover our international uh, members, so they were uh, part of that. Um, learning opportunities. Uh, in addition to the challenges, um, the respondents also reported that the next three to five years, SFPE will need to address challenges around sufficient professional development, uh, talent, uh, training opportunities for our mid-career uh, professionals. So again, it looks like our members are looking to SFP to find this type of mid-career uh, training uh, for them. Um, majority respondents, 74%, want SFP to represent the field of FPEs as a whole. 
rather than any uh, needs of its members. So again, promoting the profession over uh, the needs of individual members. Um, also, uh, largely viewed, again, this is a perception, uh, largely viewed as a respected global uh, organization uh, with relevant association to the field. It also um, said that we're multidisciplinary, cutting edge. They want to be seen as multidisciplinary, cutting edge, and collaborative in the future. So, um, you know, again, that's some guidance to keep in mind as we're forming our uh, strategic plan for 2021 to 2023. Um, so, US versus global. Again, that was a question, and what we teased out of the data was about 51% of domestic response respondents reported that SAP should be expanding its global presence rather than uh, U.S.-based initiatives. So uh, again, that's a that's a tough one to handle. We're working on that from that standpoint. Um, the greatest area of interest for expanding SAP's global presence was through partnerships with societies outside the U.S. So we are working on that uh, right now. Uh, we were working on with our European uh, director. Uh, so we'll be picking that up again. And I believe we're also picking up this uh, type of work, expanding our partnerships in our new uh, plan as we're working it through. Um, the value, again, SAP, our value uh, proposition, uh, SAP prem benefits from a strong net promoter score, meaning more people are in favor of SFB than are uh, not in favor of SFB. Uh, we have an oppor opportunity to grow that strength and perception uh, around the value and the, and the cost to the members. Um, so again, this is something we're looking at as we work up our new uh, vision, or I'm sorry, our new strategic plan. So some of the activities that we have, again, we've got our standing committees. We've got uh, 928 volunteers that are out there working on all different types of um, committee work. Uh, you can see our RTM is the biggest one, um, followed up by CPD and CPQ. Um, but again, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more of these as we go forward, uh, talking a little bit about each one of these committees um, in, later on in the presentation. So 2019, our awards and honors, uh, we had eight uh, fellows inducted. Uh, we just uh, started from our emergency professional group, uh, five under 35, which was a resounding success. Uh, we had many people apply and it was very difficult for them to, to narrow it down to, uh, to five. Um, we also had 22 professional members upgrade we had 17 society awards, three foundation recipients, and then 42 chapter excellence award winners um, with a pretty even breakdown, 14 gold, 15 silver, and 13 bronze. So again, thank all the chapters for putting the work together and applying for those uh, awards. Um, on the horizon for CMC. So we have a new membership experience launching in Q4. Uh, it's going to be a new membership database, a uh, new SAP website goes along with that, and then we're launching um, SAP Connect, which is an enhanced online community. Uh, again, our new systems will be able to track all of our continuing education that you do through SFPE, so that's kind of a nice added value that you have there. Um, and then we also have a new diversity, equity, and inclusion subcommittee uh, that was formed that's going to be working uh, through those. Um, our next standing committee, Outreach and Advocacy, uh, Jared Thibodeau and uh, Julie Gordon, uh, our staff liaison for that. Um, basically, we've got some web traffic information here. Our new visitors are definitely up. Returning visitors, you can see about 14%. Um, page hits and the whole like. So our web traffic is really going very well through the end of, oops, through the end of uh, 2020. And you can see where our, our major hits are coming from. Uh, most of them are still coming mostly from the United States, but you can see a lot of our other uh, areas and also some where some of our new chapters are, so. Um, social media presence, again, we're out there, we're on Facebook. We grew from 7,900 to 8,000 followers. 
uh, LinkedIn, uh, up a few hundred uh, followers, 19,400, 19,700. Uh, Twitter followers, uh, 3,100. And we've got an awful lot of tweets and mentions. So, and overall, we've had a little over 200,000 views on our YouTube page. So, again, our media presence is growing and people are getting uh, to know where we are uh, on the social uh, media sites. Um, Jobs by the number, we do have our job board, our job uh, career section on the website. Um, it has been fairly active, uh, 36,000 job views from January to June of uh, 2020, um, and 370, uh, three, 327,000 exposures um, for uh, 2019. So again, we're getting a lot of hits, a lot of traffic on there. Uh, for the careers. Um, some of the other, by the numbers, our FPE Magazine uh, Digital, it's unique uh, readers. Again, we had about 8,000 uh, articles, 51,000 views. Uh, SAP Europe Magazine, it's a digital distribution, um, very popular. We got 20,000 people on the distribution list. Uh, the FPE Update, uh, again, it's our members uh, update. You get emails. We had 40, uh, 4,200 that go out. Um, so we are getting out there from that standpoint. Uh, some of our new special interest groups, or I should say our special interest groups, uh, Women in Engineering, uh, it's sponsored by FM Global, Jensen Hughes, and NFPA. Uh, our Emerging Professionals uh, group, uh, Fire Services group, and then the student uh, group. So, you know, again, we, we're, uh, we're growing in that exposure in a lot of different areas. Uh, COA summary, uh, we've increased the recognition of SAPE as a source of information. Um, we've participated in student outreach in some projects such as Future City and uh, the U.S. Science and Engineering Festival, and we're developing uh, strategic partnerships with other allied organizations um, in the world. So that was our COA summary. Um, oops, get back here. Um, our research tools, so this is RTM, Research Tools and Methods. Uh, Greg Baker out of New Zealand is our chair. Uh, Chris Jelenowitz is the uh, lead for the staff. We've got Ryan Trunkel, new staff ad. Uh, he's our project coordinator, project manager. Uh, Carla is the magazine editor, and we have our uh, intern, Madison West, helping along uh, with this. So uh, research tools and methods. Uh, again, they're, they're covering the FPE magazine. Uh, we're still doing it quarterly to the members. Um, and it's also available digitally on the site. Uh, we also have the Fire Technology Journal. Uh, Guillermo Rain is our editor-in-chief. It's published by Springer. Again, it's available for our members uh, for free in the digital and print, and it comes out six times a year. So this is uh, the cutting edge research where it gets recorded. Uh, again, very popular uh, output. We have some e-news uh, output that flies out. Uh, we already mentioned SAP Europe. Uh, we have the FPE Extra, and then we have FPE Extra in Spanish, and then uh, the SFPE Update. So these are the four vehicles that we're using to communicate um, our monthly things going on. Uh, the fifth edition of the SAP Handbook. Uh, again, still a go-to reference in the industry. Uh, it's available in electronic for format for the first time. Uh, work has started on the sixth edition, and we should be completing that sometime in 2020 with a tentative publishing date of 2023 through Springer, the, per the current um, book editor and uh, printer. Um, you can see right now we did hit the spike in 2009 when it came out and it's kind of waned a little bit. Uh, 2015 we had another hit and that was kind of when it uh, it went to the E uh, format, electronic format. And we're still selling a decent amount of them every year. So it, it is still a reference document uh, that is in demand. So we will be updating it. Uh, all of the editors are now in their writing modes uh, to update. Um, for the sixth edition uh, for that. So here's a little bit more on the downloads. 
uh, again, Springer is really thrilled with the downloads that we're getting and the hits that we're getting on our documents. Uh, you can see we had uh, 380,000 hits in 2018, 300,000 hits in 2019. So it's still uh, doing a lot of downloads. People are still interested in that. Um, and we are getting paid for it. So it's a good revenue generator. Uh, Human Behavior Guide, second edition. All right, so this one is just out. We just finished it uh, in 2019. Um, it's available in both electronic and print. Um, there's a, a lot of new content in there um, on incapacity effects, occupant behavior, movement models, egress model selection, verification, estimations, and uh, enhancing human response to emergency notification messages. So a lot of good stuff, a lot of new stuff that's in there. Um, and we also have a companion class that we're teaching along with this guide um, from time to time. So um, recently out, this came out this year, uh, new guidelines for peer review in the fire protection design process. So again, um, updated the uh, peer review. It's available free to our members as a digital download, so you can have it as a reference document. Um, we've uh, listed uh, a listing of definitions in peer review, some more defined descriptions and qualifications uh, with SMP, SFP minimum uh, core competencies worked into that. Uh, information for uh, complementing the SFP code of ethics. And then we added some detail on some of the important components of the peer review process and also some limitations of the document are identified. So, you know, again, it's a great reference, um, you know, hopefully to help boost us as a profession um, from that standpoint. Um, sprinkler hydraulics, what it's all about, third edition. So this was updated by um, Russ Flemings. Um, president of the NS, NFSA. Uh, the book provides guidance for engineers, technicians, code enforcement on how to perform sprinkler system design calculations, and also uh, some guidance on how to perform these calculations by hand and by computer. So this one's going to be out and available in September of this year. And again, it'll be out there uh, from our partner Springer um, from that standpoint. Um, I need to go back one. So under development, we have a number of things that are under development. We've got a fire risk assessment we're working on, a tall buildings guide, uh, fire scenario uh, standard, uh, fire calculating exposure standard, an update on that one, uh, performance based design standard, new uh, thermal response standard, design fire standard, substantial uh, substantiating our computer model guide, and then uh, the existing building guide in 2023 and then also uh, our new handbook in 2023. So there's a lot of technical stuff on the horizon that'll be coming out uh, to help support our mission as a technical society. Uh, codes and development, uh, codes and standard development, um, we're working to increase uh, the reference to our guides and standards in all the model building codes. Uh, we've established a subcommittee, they're focusing on some of the NFPA standards with over 200 public inputs. Uh, we're looking at uh, some of the ICC standards and getting in there, uh, CEN, which is in Europe, and uh, a, uh, an ISO liaison uh, to ISO TC92 SCO4 on fire uh, protection engineering. So again, we're trying to get our guides and standards incorporated into these other documents. Our research roadmap, um, the committee is working on uh, this in coordination with the SFPE Foundation. Uh, so again, we're kind of leveraging the foundation's uh, money to help uh, encourage different developments in the research roadmap. Uh, I think they are going to be taking a look at the research roadmap and updating it over the next uh, few years also. Um, so that was RTM. Our professional qualifications uh, committee, uh, Doug Fisher is the chair. Uh, Vicki uh, Valentine is our staff liaison. Um, we've had a number of sessions for maintaining our licensure. And I wanna thank all the people that were involved with this. This is what's keeping the uh, NCWS uh, test available to our future FPEs here in the States and places where they can take 
the FPE exam. So thank you all for uh, participating. Uh, we actually ran a session in Arizona at our annual conference. Um, here's the breakdown on the FPE exam uh, over the last uh, number of years. Uh, last year, 2019, which was the last year it was going to be uh, offered in the paper form, you can see there's a total of 299 exams, uh, examinees, uh, 210 first timers, first time pass rate 55%, repeat pass rate 29%. Uh, again, we're hoping that we can work on that. We do have a new uh, study program out that starts in two weeks um, for the upcoming computer-based exam. So uh, those of you that are getting ready for that computer-based exam, yeah, consider taking that, that uh, prep course. It's a great prep course. Uh, it's all online, meets twice a week uh, for 10 weeks. Oops, that finger's on my advance. Uh, 2019 also brought out our compensation survey. Uh, we do this every three years. Uh, we had over 1,100 people participate in the survey. Uh, I know uh, interesting, well, we're just gonna hit the high points of it. Median salary, US, 118,000. Uh, previous uh, survey results, uh, we were basically 6.4% uh, basic increase. Um, and 66% of U.S. participants held a professional engineering license uh, from that standpoint. A um, little bit more breakdown on it. You can see uh, the median salary, male and female. Uh, you can see our breakdown from our survey. We had 13% female, 87% male. Um, a high percentage of our female participants have less than 20 years of experience. Um, so again, that may be another indicator on why the salary is a little bit lower. Um, getting your PE, definitely a big difference. You can see the median salaries for a PE versus a non-PE uh, in the industry. Again, this is going to be based on our U.S. respondents. Um, and then uh, another interesting note, 14.2% of our respondents are retiring within five years. And yeah, I, I probably raised my hand. I think I may be one of those. So um, again, on average, PEs earn about 36% more than a non-PE uh, from that standpoint. Um, professional qualifications and uh, projects that are underway right now, uh, we are working on uh, the FPE roles and specific competencies needed. So we're kind of fine tuning our competencies. Uh, we're develop uh, and ensure continuity of the PE exam. So we're working uh, diligently on more questions, uh, see what the effects of the computer-based exam are going to be. Um, we're also updating our uh, criteria for ABET for the accreditation of both FPE and the FPE technology. Um, we're also looking at ABET accredited review, administering the ABET accreditation reviews. Um, we're enhancing our career guide, so it will be out triannually. So we'll have a new career guide coming out in 2021. And uh, they're also reviewing uh, for possible update the SFPE code of ethics. So again, uh, professional qualifications, taking care of a lot of business there. Oops, go back again. Um, continuing professional development. Mark Fessenden is our chair. Uh, Louis Garazzi is our uh, lead on the, on the staff. Uh, Maggie Moad is also supporting it and Holly uh, Carmen is our sales manager for this. So continuing pro, uh, professional development, um, this is kind of a summary of our seminars in 2019. So we were very active in 2019. Uh, from that standpoint, we had 290 attendees in 2019. You can see the spread of the different um, offerings we had uh, with the high being the risk uh, one. And so far in 2020, so 2019, we had 290. So far in 2020, yeah, we're all cooped up. We're all doing continuing education. So we have offered uh, four seminars so far in 2020, FDS, uh, the performance-based design, a tall building seminar, and our new human behavior one. Uh, we had a great turnout uh, so far. The uh, FDS and... Um, professional development were both in person and online and the uh, tall buildings was in person only and our human behavior was only online. So uh, 
again, we'll probably be offering these again uh, this year, hopefully online. So if you're interested, sign up. Um, we are capable of delivering both online and in person. Um, PE exam review. So again, this is our participants in the PE exam review course I had mentioned earlier. Uh, so far uh, this year, we have a little oh, under 80 uh, signed up. And I think that might be more than that. I heard it, there was a higher number last week. Um, but again, our participation has been very high. Um, and I believe the rumors I heard is there's more of a closer to a 70% pass rate if you take the PE uh, exam review. Uh, it's just a rumor. That's all I've heard. Can't prove it. Uh, now, some of our updated seminars we got coming along. We're going to have an advanced fire detection, uh, fire alarm system design course, uh, an application risk assessment, our dusk explosion hazard recognition, uh, fire dynamic simulator and smoke view. We're going to do uh, some more uh, tall buildings, uh, fire safety and life safety design, our human behavior one. And then uh, for 2021, we've got a performance-based design and codes. Uh, that'll be an updated one. And then principles of fire protection engineering, and then a new uh, sprinkler design for engineers uh, seminar that'll be coming out. Um, our webinar series, uh, we're slowly changing our webinar series. You may have caught on. Um, we have three levels of series right now. Uh, when we first came under uh, quarantine, I guess you could say, we were doing a lot of free uh, online webinars, a lot of activity, um, but we've broken that down right now. So we have our uh, Monday webinars, which are exclusively for members. And again, these are topics, uh, relevant topics in engineering, uh, hour long seminar on a specific area. Uh, we have our perspective series, which uh, SFP has partnered with some of our industry leaders, uh, manufacturers, to talk about uh, the current technologies, methods, things that are going on uh, in the industry. And again, those are free to the members. And then we have our premium series, uh, which we are charging for. This is a more in-depth uh, dive into a topic. Uh, we just uh, finished uh, a five-week series. We talked about uh, remote video inspection. So we got, it, uh, we got four different aspects of it. We had uh, the code aspect from Bill Koffel. We had a code officials aspect uh, from uh, Valerie Evans. We had an owner's aspect uh, from it, Christine, um, Christina Francis. And then we had uh, basically an AHJ, or former AHJ, Bassam uh, Khalil, uh, gave us a presentation. And then we put it all together for about an hour and a half uh, open forum, questions, comments, and uh, discussion with all four of those uh, presenters in the same area. So it was uh, quite an interesting uh, seminar and I believe we had a pretty good turnout for that one. So uh, those are gonna be our webinar offerings uh, going into the future, so keep an eye out. Uh, I believe the next premium series is gonna be on uh, ion battery storage systems. So uh, keep an eye out for that, it'll be soon. Oops, oh, fat fingers. So uh, our webinar impact. Uh, so 2019, 6,258 participants, 22 live webinars. As of today in 2020, we've had uh, 5,076 participants watching 22 live webinars. Uh, we're not done with our webinars for this year, so we will probably have significantly more people participating this year. Again, not a surprise based on uh, the restrictions everyone's under right now. So here's kind of a summary of our webinars. Uh, registered versus attended. It's always a slight discrepancy, but you can see we kind of peaked out there in 2019 at uh, 9,600 registered, uh, 6,200 participant. And you can see right now in 2020, we're uh, probably gonna meet that trend, meet or beat that trend easily. So again, webinars seem to be one of the uh, favored uh, delivery methods. Um, our annual conference history, you can see here, um, we have been growing on our annual conferences. Uh, Phoenix was 406, Nashville, again, right now is the, t is the high at 416. Um, we're still working out what we're gonna be doing for uh, 2020. So here's our conference uh, program committee members. Uh, 
me and Katie are uh, co-chairs. Uh, right now we have confirmed uh, general uh, sessions. Uh, you can see them listed there, Kevin, Jim, and Dan Arnold and Scott Futel. Uh, we also have 26 exhibitors and 12 sponsors. So uh, keep well, we are gonna keep you posted as to the status of this. Uh, again, depending upon how uh, lockdowns and openings and things go, um, that may change. Um, our professional, our, I'm sorry, I'll get it, performance-based design, um, conferences and histories. You can see uh, Auckland, we were at 169. Uh, Auckland was very close. Uh, I think we all left there on the 14th or 15th of March, and I believe they closed New Zealand down after that. Uh, I think we can safely say we had no people infected or uh, or uh, harmed by the virus uh, of our attendees. Uh, New Zealand was a great host. We had a great time there. Uh, unfortunately, we had that giant cloud hanging over our head. Uh, so it was a successful uh, performance-based design conference. Uh, the next one we'll be doing will be in two years uh, in Copenhagen. Oh, sorry, two years in Copenhagen. So right now it's tentatively uh, planned for March 21. Uh, 22 for our seminars and the conference March 23, 24. Um, so again, if you're interested, mark that on your calendar in uh, 2022. Okay, uh, European uh, safety conferences. One of the things that we started, um, we, we uh, again, the chapters in Europe are getting more and more energized. So uh, Rotterdam in 2018, uh, we were we were there for uh, a European conference. We did Malaga in 2019, knowing that performance-based design was going to be um, not in Europe <laughs> in 2020. So uh, what we're going to be doing uh, here and out on the odd years, we will be having a European conference. Um, so uh, Malaga was 201, Rotterdam uh, 177. So it was a, you know, again, very good turnout. I think it was great for uh, Malaga. It was very good for energizing our European uh, members and getting them active. Um, our next European conference is coming up next year, 2021. Um, again, March of 2021. This is going to be in Berlin. Uh, David Grossman and Kez Keys both are our co-chairs. Uh, you should see stuff coming out on that in the near future as far as call for papers and 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 the like. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel and we're trying to find a date to redo our engineering symposium. Uh, we're looking at uh, instituting some uh, shorter one or two day symposiums on a specific topic. So we had developed one uh, for cultural and inher inher heritage sites. Um, it was going to be in Rome in June, beginning of June. Unfortunately, uh, due to, to the pandemic, we canceled that one at this point in time. We are currently planning, uh, and it's in the very early stages, uh, doing one uh, on wildland um, interface. Uh, and uh, chair right now is Albert Simeone, and we'll be bringing out locations and dates uh, in the near future, but we're trying to aim for sometime in 2021 to have this symposium on wildfires. So again, it's gonna be more of a concentrated um, look at engineering solutions uh, to the wildfire issues. Okay, uh, so quick summary of our CPD. Uh, we're gonna define curriculum to teach more of the core competencies uh, it will probably be in a number of different modes, probably face-to-face, -face, online, and the like. Um, we're going to develop and implement some uh, plans and create our core cur curriculum. We're looking to enhance the PE exam review, um, host a number of webinar series. We kind of laid out where we're going. And then we're going to plan to host some global conferences, workshops, and symposiums. So uh, again, 2020 um, has been a real challenging year, uh, but we're looking forward uh, and still planning to do these uh, conferences, symposiums, and workshops. Now, 
Um, yeah, one of the things I want to say is we've got a really terrific team right now uh, with the SFPE staff. Uh, they have been working diligently. We've been uh, we've been online. We've been uh, active and reaching out to our our uh, membership base and helping them. Um, we, we're getting great support from the companies. We're getting great support from our members working on our technical committees. Um, I wanna thank you all for that. Um, again, this is a real challenging year. Uh, stay tuned, we'll be bringing out our information on uh, the annual meeting, how we're gonna deal with it, what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll also be posting, hopefully, some of our award recipients uh, later next week as we, uh, as we finalize all of that. So um, I think that kind of brings us uh, close to the end, right? Oh, we actually have time for questions this time. Um, I did this last week for the Corporate 100 and we uh, didn't have much time for questions. So I guess, uh, Maggie, can you read the questions if we have any? Because uh, I'm not sure where they're so, gonna pop up on my... So Mike, I um, b based on last week's uh, format and running out of time, I have been answering questions um, through the text messaging oh, okay. feature. So there have been actually quite a few questions, and m most of them I've I think I think I have answered. So if there are any other additional questions, please um, type those in now, and we can get to those. Otherwise, you can always reach out to Mike or I, and we can respond to you directly. Yeah. Yeah. I would just want to add, Mike, one thing is we, as Mike has said, you know, we've been pivoting um, and um, remaining as flexible as we can, understanding that the the situation is constantly changing, but it would be really um, helpful to all of us at SFPE if um, keeping, keeping us informed as to what is happening with your companies as far as travel restrictions or discretionary spending, things like that, so that we're not caught off guard and we can we can plan accordingly. Um, we are being conservative. We are starting our budgeting process for 2021. And um, obviously there's so many unknowns right now, but we're very appreciative to the companies that have come forward and just given us a heads up on, you know, hey, we're not able to travel through the end of 2020. We don't know about 2021 yet, et cetera, et cetera. That really helps us um, in informing us as to what to expect and, and how to plan and, and how to budget. So, so we can be good stewards of, uh, of, of the organization's funds. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, our membership has grown this year. That was, I, I thought we had a slide on that, but we did see a little spike in our membership over the last three months, and probably people trying to get involved with our online uh, webinars and webinar series. Uh, but we had more members um, than normal in that springtime bracket. So, uh, you know, SAP is strong. Uh, we've got a good financial base. Uh, we have a lot of energized uh, members that are making our, our standing committees move, to say the least. Um, the foundation uh, is, is very stable and the foundation is working and you've probably seen a couple of their offerings that have come out. Um, I can't steal their thunder. They'll be doing uh, their presentations and, and announcements probably a little bit later in the year, uh, but they are, are really up and running. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a good thing to see. Um, it's unfortunately we can't get together and share this face to face, but um, this is definitely a, a good thing for 2020. Great. I think we do have a question around um, high level um, high level news on how COVID is impacting the fire protection engineering uh, profession. And Mike, maybe you could just kind of give a highlight on the uh, pre the webinar series that we did on that and kind of some of the outcomes that came from that. Yeah, we did a, we did a little series uh, early on, it was probably in April, um, that we had uh, some of the leaders in the industry uh, on, there was four of us, we had a little uh, uh, panel discussion. And at that point in time, uh, there was some erosion of, the work base, not a lot. Uh, we know a number of our participants on the panel, they were not hiring and had no intention of hiring until uh, the economy settled down a little bit. Uh, so we know there was, there's been a little stall on that end of it. Um, you know, from what I've seen um, on my side, uh, the business is 
hot and cold and different aspects of it. I mean, we uh, on our healthcare, we were dead for a while. And as soon as they lifted uh, and allowed elective surgeries, they let other people in and we were we were crazy busy. So, um, you know, again, it's it's tough to say overall, but I think overall we are slowing down a little bit. Um, I think that's something we're going to take into account when we uh, when we go through our budgeting process for 2021. Uh, so, um, again, that's my opinion, my opinion only. <laughs> Not sharing anything secret. Uh, so, <laughs> just from me, from me observing the world from my uh, laptop and uh, big screen TV here. Uh, all right. Anybody else? Uh, uh, questions about the PowerPoint in this presentation that we've recorded. So uh, we have recorded it and we will be posting it on the website and on our YouTube channel. So folks that want to take another look or share it or weren't able to make it um, can have access to this. So that's okay. some questions that have come up. Yeah. And then I guess there's another question and we could probably get Julie to answer this one is what's the address of the German chapter? It's a very new that. chapter. I already did that one. <laughs> you did that one? Okay. All right. I see that one. You didn't mark that one as answered. So, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think I've responded to all. Um, and okay. I think we're in good shape, Mike. All right. Well, again, thank you very much for your, your time and tuning into us. Um, Sorry, I ran really, really fast, but we did the same slideshow and I ran out of time last week. So um, so I probably went a little too fast. But again, you'll be able to download it off of our uh, YouTube page and you can uh, look at it at your leisure. Uh, again, share it with other members. Let them know that we've had this. Uh, you know, the big takeaway, uh, SFE is doing well in 2020, regardless of COVID in the rest of the world. I think uh, the, the society is doing very well right now. So thank you very much and appreciate your time. Thanks everyone, bye-bye. Yeah.